Okay, let's start. So, just a few meetings ago, there was a presentation about other stuff, and there was something related to Russia, and I got asked about why Russians are such a good programmers. So, are they? And uh, wh why is that? I want to talk about that with you today. So, my name is Slava. That's my really long name. Please don't remember it. Slava is enough. So today I, I will try to understand, to explain my ideas, why, why such myth or reality like this stereotype exists and uh, what's the reason for that and uh, some insights what's going on in Russia in terms of IT today. And uh, just remark, a lot of stuff I'm going to talk today about, like uh, it's not, I will tell Russian, I will say Russian, but actually it's all the post-Soviet area like Ukraine, Belarus, like all of these countries, like we share a lot of common history and uh, in this matter it's almost the same. So Romania also, if it's not here, but still same stuff. So why can I talk about this stuff? First of all, I'm also a software developer. I used to work in a company and I'm studying now, but uh, also I'm from Russia. So I, and I went through uh, like education in Russia, like start studying elementary school all the way to master degree. And I also studied abroad in the UK, in uh, Europe, in Czech Republic, and uh, now I'm studying here, so I can compare some stuff. Uh, and yeah, I asked my friends, Russian, Ukrainian, a lot of people, what do they think and why is that happening and uh, why this stereotype exists. I will share this, my findings with you today. Uh, first of all, I would like to make stereotype check. Any of you have heard like Russians are particularly good in programming? Please raise your hands. Okay, some people didn't. So okay, I want to ask more, a different question. How many people have heard that Russians are good hackers? Like yeah. you guys specifically? <laughs> uh huh. So being hacker being, and programmer being is... Being like web programmers or game programmers or I view them as being crafty and, uh, and good at the low level, uh, low level stuff because, because they got, uh, they, most of the living in the common is harder, harder right? Oh, okay. So, <laughs> we will talk about that yeah, today. Skill, <laughs> that's, that's my stereotype. I, I think oh, okay. that's a common American stereotype. <laughs> yeah, but being good at the low level kind of implies maybe... But, yeah, of course, everything counts. So the stereotypes, stereotype is kind of checked. So that's a phrase from uh, the guy, uh, his name is Evgeny Kaspersky. He, is, he founded uh, a really famous security company, uh, also Kaspersky Antivirus. So he told that uh, if you, you want to lift 50 kilos, you have to train for 100. And Russian programmers trained for 200. I don't know if it's true, but it's uh, like he's also promoting this idea. Uh, being Russians, it's kind of, uh, yeah. But, <laughs> but that's a really famous phrase. If you Google for like Russian hackers, Russian programmers, why they're good, you will find this phrase. So I wanted to share that. So let's try to understand where it comes from. First of all, uh, in a lot of cases you see on the news, computing, like uh, competitive programming contests. Russia first place. This is 2017, uh, the biggest uh, competition in, uh, like, the most famous one in uh, competitive programming, ACM one. It's once a year and starts with regionals, like the nationals, and worldwide competition. And uh, as you can see, this year Russia won the first place. Well, one year is not enough. So that's a chart for last years. <laughs> Uh, as you can see, not not just Russia. I want to mention it's not just Russia, but Saint, Saint Petersburg. Just all, almost always one city. But yeah, some other cities also here, like Saratov and stuff like that. I'm from Siberia. That's not so far away there, but not Saint Petersburg. No. Uh, but uh, I will explain. Why, uh, why St. Petersburg? It has really long history of uh, ACM participation and uh, they have special kind of division, almost department in university 
all about competitive programming. So they actually train people from morning to night to do this task. So, uh, and uh, they have like former winners as the coaches and they get paid a lot and that's really, it's like camp for making competitive programmers. So that's my sense, but uh, yeah, if you look down this table before 2000, uh, Russia is never there, but it's always America because before 2000s, it's all uh, like it wasn't that global, and almost all com like teams were from America, and well, it's America, 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 America before that. And uh, also, I would like to mention famous programmers. So that's another thing why people have this stereotype, probably. Uh, that's a most famous example, but the less, least relevant, actually, that's uh, Sergey Brin. He founded Google, one of two people uh, who founded Google. He's Russian. He was born in Russia. He was raised till the age of eight in Russia. And then he left to America. So I wouldn't count him as like really good example for that. But many, many times when people ask, uh, like, oh, wow, who is famous among Russian programmers? Of course, him. He founded Google. Come on, Russians founded Google. Well, not really. He, he graduated Stanford, and like his whole life is maybe if it's not genetics, it doesn't count. Uh, there are much better examples. Uh, I'd like to show some of them, like Alexei, with uh, not so Russian family name, Chervonetskis. So he actually like it's uh, 60s. He found something like uh, his theory of uh, learning lies in the bottom of the whole machine learning stuff which we are doing today, which everybody talking today. Here. So the very basics, they were defined in Soviet Union by him. So that's one of the examples of a like, really hardcore mathematician programmer from Russia. Is that, is that SVM? Hmm? Is that SVM? Yes. Yeah. Another one uh, who made uh, like really great deal in artificial intelligence is a uh, Georgi Andelson Velsky, also not so Russian family name. That's uh, well, they mostly Jewish. So, uh, so he's found kind of invented first balanced tree search tree data structure, which is based for based for many game artificial intelligence and uh, some. Algorithm based on that uh, are in used in database engine and stuff like that. So, also pretty important guy, and uh, he was the first one to start chess programming kind of events. And uh, his uh, algorithms, based on his algorithms, was the Cassia, the first winner of the first chess comp programming chess competition. So yeah, this is. Uh, Anybody knows him? Heard of him? No, he's not so famous in the world, but uh, anybody heard of Telegram? Oh. That's, uh, he's actually in Russia, he's really famous for founding Vkontakte, which is uh, like Russian Facebook, and, and uh, which is really big and much better than Facebook, I would say. <laughs> like, uh, it's just VK.com. Yes, yeah. well, it was Vkontakte.com, but now it's VK.com. Yeah, so he founded this website, and uh, when he was like early twenties, you know, like a lot, like, history a lot like Zuckerberg, actually. And he stole ideas. Though. The basic idea is this from Facebook, but then he made this company and made it really popular. And even now, it's like one of the. It's a, I guess it's number one website in Russia, but uh, number thirty-five in the world. Uh, I think Ukraine, uh, all the post-Soviet countries, and uh, I think some uh, some countries uh, in Asia, like there was some small countries, I'm not sure, but uh, yeah, mostly Russia. I think in Ukraine they banned. Yeah, in Ukraine recently they banned it, you know. Last week. Yeah, so. No. Yeah, because uh, the guy is not owning the website anymore. Yeah, he was fired. Right, so. He was fired, and then he founded another product, uh, Telegram, which is super secure, super encryption. Hmm? Does he still live in Russia? No. Yeah. 
he left after was he was fired and uh, he founded that and Escaped. Telegram is also being banned in Russia right now because no, no, no. The yesterday they said okay we accept okay no, not yet <laughs> not yeah. they are trying to but because uh, he is not willing to share kind of the ways of encryption and to uh -huh. like to make it in like include some keys to decrypt all the messages uh -huh. well that's political stuff another thing uh, really famous the tetris game right <laughs> really important Alexei. vadim gerasimov and alexey the music called karobachka yeah and uh, yeah that's why we have kremlin here even though it's nintendo so the word informatics itself comes from Russia. Uh, it was introduced by this guy Alexander Ivanovich Mikhail Mikhailov, and uh, like in early 90s, uh, 20th century, 20th century. So it's called informatica in Russian, and then it was mirrored into English and all the other languages as informatics. So that's a Kaspersky. So there are two Kaspersky uh, in Russia, like they're both famous. Uh, the f this is his actual surname. So his actual Kaspersky, he's really smart guy, founded the company, security expert and stuff. And this is uh, Chris Kaspersky, that's his nickname. That's not real name. But it has nothing to do with previous guy. He is not so famous worldwide, but uh, in Russia and in hacker community, he is uh, like actual example of a hacker. Uh, he's really famous for being se also security expert and uh, he worked as McAfee, also lived in America in his second part of a life, let's say. And uh, officially he's security expert, but everybody assumed he to be participated in many attacks and stuff like that as a hacker. So also pretty famous guy. The other thing you may know from here uh, founded in Russia and still it's like STL, C++ STL uh, is kind of uh, work of Russian programmer and Jinx is really famous I guess. 7-zip, I don't know if it's famous in worldwide. FAR, RAR, yeah everybody heard. Okay, so that's kind of uh, all stuff. A B, uh, well I was, it's uh, yeah OCR engine uh, and uh, actually the whole suit for scanning, for now they have much more, but they started as a scanner company, like for uh, like software for scanners. That's also really famous in some countries, but uh, not not everywhere, I guess. So why we uh, we see there are a lot of programmers, a lot of uh, great people, and we've been in World Cups in so in programming. So why? So the first reason everybody were suggesting and everybody were like I'm speculating, it's not communist regime and stuff like that, but the education. Uh, the first of all, during Cold War, after Second World War, there was really uh, big finances sent to the engineering, to IT included, like to, of course the reason is to make weapon, obviously, but uh, the, all the fundamental research, physics, mathematics, uh, all of that was financed crazily and uh, well I think it influenced a lot like our way of education it's really different from what I see here from what I see in Europe what I hear about America and uh, now it's changing back to be honest now it's uh, becoming more like specialized not general not so deep uh, people want to learn faster and practical skills and so getting worse I think but for now current generations they are still using the same educational framework from that time so second of all uh, like uh, we have compulsory military service in Russia so if you graduate high school and you don't go to university you're going to lose two years of your life or currently it's one year of your life like serving in military which is destroys many people brains mm -hmm. in a lot of cases it's famous for being a really cruel place and uh, nobody wants to go there so that pushes people to get education and Russia has the highest 
percentage of uh, educated, I mean higher education people. So that's me actually uh, with anti-aircraft uh, and uh, I also studied military stuff in uh, university. So yeah, in each university has their own division on specializing on their own thing. That was our, yeah. Yes, I actually got to shoot it. So that was that was, that was really cool. This is not real one though. Yeah, and uh, it all starts with high school. That's the thing. Uh, things we have to know after we graduate. Like, uh, if you graduate high school in Russia, that's pretty much the list. And uh, when I see, I often go to Japanese schools to you know, speak about Russia, like practice English uh, with them and stuff like that. Their level is so much different. <laughs> you wouldn't, you, it's like so different. Uh, almost nothing of this list in uh, higher education in Japan. I don't know about your countries. I find that really interesting because the Japanese take a particular pride from what I see in their, Jap in their mathematical ability. And they look down on the U.S. and, and feel that the Japanese mathematics is I great. I don't know about U.S. though. I've heard it's also not so good. Yeah. Yeah. And high school, that's what's your required for? Uh, I mean, but it's what people they will learn, will go into some of the stuff that they decide to go to the higher level. Classes. Before going to university. Required. Yeah. Okay. It's, this is the same for us. We learn the same stuff. The problem is that is not that you learn a lot of crap and you don't know what you what you're going to use it for. So I think it's better what they do. Uh, learn less than you know. When you when you studying that uh, like. Every every student asks the question, why, why, like, explain why me why. why. But uh, still, those who continue education, those who go to humanitarians or just, they just stop, they just forget this stuff. Or they just uh, don't understand it at this level. Uh, but uh, those who continue, it's really useful because you don't start from beginning. In America, you have to prepare a lot for, like, like the scrum schools and stuff like that, right? Here in Japan, the same to get to university. And then from the first year, you spend two years studying that. So that's just a couple of examples I got from uh, like uh, university entrance and uh, high school graduation examinations, like a uh, general one for everyone. It's not IT specialty or like not, not mathematical specialty. Actually, for me, it looks, for me, it looks scary even now. <laughs> I forgot. <laughs> well, I, I can do three of them, uh, but uh, yeah, that would require me to remember, not not just now, I would have to remember some stuff to maybe look up some things, but it's it looks difficult, but not... <laughs> well, yeah, so I think that's one of the reasons, uh, because mathematical education in high school is really strong. Uh, as for competing programming, is also in high schools, we have a clubs, clubs like in almost in every school in cities, in villages, I guess, not so many, but in many schools, not mathematically directed, not specializing in IT or anything like that. Like normal schools, they have clubs for competitive programming for, and they have mentors who participated. So you start learning, 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 you go to the regionals, you go to every level and they select the best ones. That's probably one of the reasons because uh, one of the reasons why we participate in these competitions and win. Maybe that's the one. And there is really uh, the Japanese thing, but uh, in this area, we, if, you, if you are good, some uh, former competitive programmer will find you and will teach you and there is uh, there are communities like that and it's really separate world world in Russia in IT they just exist they have their own resources their own uh, like uh, buildings even like it's crazy it, as for higher education almost every IT student start working in the beginning it's uh, completely different from Japan I, I'm graduating now and looking for a job and all the Japanese they start looking for a job one year before graduation and they go through this long, long, long process which has nothing to do with their ability in IT. They just, you know, look for potential. So you study for six years and companies don't ask anything from you. 
and sick it's really bad it's uh, demotivating it's super bad and uh, so in Russia I was working from the first year of uh, it's not like super professional job but I, I, it was like Baito but IT Baito I was like actually doing some programming like s writing some scripts uh, in the company managing some network like getting some knowledge but and it's advances advances and uh, it's really important I think and uh, in Russia comparing also to Japan to Europe we have fixed disciplines we don't have uh, this I want to choose that because this course is too, too difficult for me and this is not so interesting I don't think I need that Russian educational system knows better what you need you just go through it and uh, you learn everything even though this physics is crazy difficult you still learn it it's, we study six years also like Europe now before it was five also an interesting thing is uh, Siberia a lot of if you look at the list of uh, programmers including the St. Petersburg University a lot of people there they were born in Siberia and they went there to the good university why is that because uh, in uh, the beginning or again of well around World War before that after that there was many smart people in Russia who was too smart and because you are too smart you were sent to Siberia and uh, many Germans many Jewish many people with thinking out of the box against governments and like stuff like that they sent all sent there so there is some kind of environment where you it's kind of prison but everyone is super smart and so like we have uh, <laughs> the biggest amount of universities in Russia are in Siberia we have the whole cities of university one of them is my city Tomsk it's like uh, about 20 universities in one city and like uh, almost 60% uh, of uh, population are students so in the summer they all disappear they go to their own cities so yeah and uh, after that the government realized oh my god that's so many smart people let's make uh, research centers there and they made the secret cities is 42 closed cities first of all it's remote location so this kind of it's not so mm, it's safe in terms of uh, country security and uh, hidden somewhere in forests in Siberia and we have already smart people there so they build these cities and I also lived next to one of them it's not secret I guess uh, like I'm not telling what's inside so that's okay <laughs> uh, so yeah so now it's uh, really growing scientific centers like Silicon Valley they always like to compare to Silicon Valley but it's not the same stuff <laughs> but the most important thing in education in Russia I think it is free mm -hmm. so okay. completely free everything starting school to it's not e only free you get paid if you enter university uh, you have some scholarship it's really small but you can survive and if you have some help from your parents uh, it's completely doable if not almost doable so that's a one of another reason why we have so many educated people and when you have so many educated people many of them are kind of not maybe not uh, every one of them is smart but you have so good good selection and everyone is advanced so you can pick the smartest ones that's uh, what happens and the motivation it's the second reason from apart from education if you work in IT you can get salary in dollars and it's really important in Russia because you automatically earning at least twice as much as everyone else it's like huge gap it's uh, like rubble is now weak before that it was stronger but still it was a really big difference now it's even bigger gap so if you work in IT you have potential to leave to America to any other countries and uh, that's another motivation sadly what do you mean by the salary? well that means you work in Russia but your company for example it could be even in Russia but American company and it's it earns their money from uh, American or European customers so you get money in dollars and if you translate it to rubles that's twice as much as you get from the customers in Russia and as a, as a programmer you can work remotely that's even 
it's also a possibility for you personally to get salary in dollars and just translate to rubles and be really rich. Another reason, there is no respect to like uh, plagiarism, to licenses and stuff like that in Russia. I mean, on the level of normal people, of course, companies try to do that, but uh, as when it comes to students and stuff like that, if you if you go to the students and ask, did you buy this Windows? And you say yes, he, probably you will get laughed at because why? You can download it, it's like for free. Why would you do that? And that's like really, it was really hard transaction for me when I came to Europe and uh, like, <laughs> and uh, like buying music, buying uh, films, like any content, including software, it's really different. So when you start, you have everything you want. Like these resources are biggest in the world. Like you can get like anything, like really specialized modeling uh, software for engineers, like for this particular liquid simulation. It is here, it's like crazy. And as long as you get something, you just copy it, put it here, and you make the K generator or something like that, and you put it here. And it kind of in, put in improves your reputation and uh, yourself getting like happy about sharing. Yeah, so I think that's a really good reason be, uh, for you have all the resources. You have computer, you have all the software, you have mathematical education and you can use it. How about free software as in like uh, GPLs, like you know, open source software? Is it popular in Russia or like it's something that's not really common? I mean, now it's uh, getting better in, in, in terms of, uh, like, initially, if you look at the statistics, Windows prevailing, no Linux, and uh, even in professional industry, it's almost always Windows, Windows, Windows. And, but now it's mo kind of changing because uh, it's becoming much more international and you have to, you know, deal with licenses when it comes to international business. And, but yeah, in uh, like Linux and uh, all the products is, are popular. But when you need something specialized or like databases and stuff like that, you just. But friend, get it. do you have the equivalent of GitHub in Russia? No, we use GitHub. Okay. I, I never heard of uh, like any local thing like that. Yeah, that's another reason. Uh, probably no one heard of Habra Habra. No one heard of it, right? So you've heard, okay. Well, that's, he can read Russian. Uh, that makes sense. That's uh, actually, I would say, it's the biggest IT resource in the world. That's uh, something I've never seen anywhere in the world. That's a community of programmers, including living in Russia, working in US, working anywhere, like living anywhere, they are still participating. And uh, there are articles, it's like blog, platform for uh, IT related topics and uh, you can find anything starting from like really basic tutorials to really complicated detailed articles about uh, anything like a few days ago there was like was another uh, epidemic of this virus Petya uh, from Russian hackers also probably uh, which encrypt all your data on computer and was, like many Russian companies was uh, and Chinese was uh, affected by it. So just several hours afterwards, there are many articles about decompilation, some details in, in the code, how to, like there are no such like content in the world. Like it's only in Russian, only here. And if we get some kind of things like uh, big articles about any other stuff abroad in English, in uh, other languages, it's really fa it's translated really fast. It's also here. So when I Google some IT related stuff, I often use English first if for documentation and stuff. And if it's something more, if it's something more complicated, I would use Russian, and I probably would find it here or something like that. It's another thing. So what? Uh, just before finishing, few things what's happening now. So that's a famous IT company. There are actually a few of them. I, I was looking hard and it's really sad. Uh, a lot of good Russian programmers all working in uh, 
huge companies in Google, so many Russians in Facebook. I've heard the number 30 to 40 percent are uh, like uh, Slavic, pr Slavic roots people. Uh, so, yeah, many people work not in top, but in not in the bottom of the like career, but uh, in the middle, because usually the companies want to have uh, the CEO and stuff like that local, always, especially in Japan, also in America, everywhere. Locals are closer, but middle range administration like. Uh, managing development team, there are many Russians there, and of course developers also. So that's kind of the list of the biggest companies. Anybody heard of Yandex? Yeah. Uh, so that's also, pr it's a search engine, and uh, all the, also like Google, like Maps, blah, 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 everything. So popular in Russia and until recently in Ukraine, also banned, uh, sadly. Yes. Another thing, anybody heard of Skolkovo? Also, you heard of Skolko. That's uh, uh, another Silicon Valley in Russia. That's a special project of our government. They got huge amount of money, like really big numbers, and they put all of it to build a city near the Moscow. Not so far, but it's a completely like there was nothing there. The new city. They invited uh, startups, investors, uh, all the all the companies, including international ones. Uh, like uh, Japanese companies, uh, all their Sony, uh, like all the like, I think Nintendo even has the office, like small office there. Like a lot of money and a lot of infrastructure and a lot of bonuses for companies to have like uh, tax reductions and stuff like that. So if you are business owner and you want to have some penetration to, to Russia, that's a pl place to start, I guess. But uh, from the negative side. Corruption, awful corruption. It's a uh, huge amount of money were just disappeared for <laughs> some reasons. And uh, so it's really hard to tell if it's success or not yet because it started not so well. It's almost five years now, but uh, still uh, it's a long way to go to build such big thing. But so far, many startups, not any famous, there, is, there are not like good famous results. So hopefully in future. Another thing which is happening recently and uh, really buzzing in Russia, it's a uh, national firewall. You all heard about Chinese one, and uh, it's famous for being all controlling, all things. So we are building one of our own. It's also really sad. And uh, it started like a good initiative to protect from uh, suicide descriptions, uh, terrorist organizations, uh, from... Uh, Something like that. Well, it's of course. It's it, always what they say. Yeah, that's, yeah, and so then. Child porn, so yeah, yeah, it's child porn was in the list. And then, and then boom. And this this website also now disagrees with government, so it also gets in the list <laughs> by accident. So that happens a lot, and uh, now we have a rule about uh, storing in private information. That's really important for foreign businesses if you want to act in Russia. Uh, Important business if you handle any private information that includes birthday and name of a person. So any information about your user profile, you have to store it on the territory of Russia. So you have to have servers in there. They cannot tell, obviously, where it is. If you have like, for, for example, Asia have some data centers in Russia, you cannot tell if it's exactly in Russia. But officially, you have to have possibility to do that. And some uh, some big uh, resources they decline like this law they say well we are not doing that like LinkedIn it's banned now we cannot access LinkedIn from Russia well officially but the like last thing uh, there are first the smallest uh, improvement of the system we have uh, article about uh, like in really detailed articles this Habra Habra resource how to through us that how to many many ways uh, soft special software developed by just people for people special like huge server farms anonymizers just organized for this purpose so they are trying to make it better and uh, in Russia Russian programmers uh, like IT community fights this 
initiative. It's really negative. Uh, all the IT community is really negative about that. And because it is slowly coming to the point when they do the two things which were afraid the most, well, it is root certificate for every Russian citizen. You have to install uh, Kazakhstan doing that. You have to install a root certificate, and uh, after that, SSL becomes kind of useless because you, all the traffic goes through the SSL of the government and then to the SSL of the resource. And the second one is whitelist. Now we have blacklist. When we come to whitelist, it's well, it's finished because if they decide what exactly what we can see, not opposed to we cannot see, that's really awful. So in my opinion, uh, I've seen a lot of programmers, I've met a lot of programmers that are from different countries in uh, so many awesome developers and uh, it's really foolish to say like Russians, uh, Russian programmers are good and I personally do not put myself into the category of genius uh, programmers from Russia. And so, yeah, and I, I believe uh, there are some bent to the Slavic community in general uh, for one of these reasons or maybe other reasons, but it's not super significant. Uh, when I looked for famous programmers, of course, America and uh, Europe, there are so many people in this list. I just listed Russians, but of course, uh, any of you can find famous people from your country. And uh, sadly, many people who I meet, like who has who are really genius in my opinion, they are not in Russia. They are already in the US, they are here, they are in Europe, they are anywhere but in Russia. And I can understand that. I am also here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I think that's the end of my presentation. If you have some questions, please. Yeah. Um, so you mentioned like the, the government is building this kind of uh, Silicon Valley kind of uh, model, right? Uh, how about for the other companies like Yandex and you know Mail that are used? Like, where are the investors coming from? Like, is it local investors? Is it the state uh, investing in those companies? Like, how does the financial system works for these kind of companies? I am not super competent in the financial system, but uh, I know that uh, Yandex it's itself is an uh, investor for many companies uh, in startups, like such big companies. They are, they have their investing branches and uh, many startups they go through Yandex actually. The Yandex has a whole integrator, I'll have to say incubator for uh, startups. You go there, you present your idea, you get some resources and stuff. So uh, we have local investors of course, we have VCs, we have all this stuff we ha and uh, normally people use them if you work in Russia but if you want to start up uh, IT business most of the people I know, they go to, well, you know where, they will go to California and they start there. And this, uh, that's why I listed only a few, few of these companies. And all the companies you've seen listed, they, are, they started really long ago, like, uh, and, well, for IT long ago, 20 years or something. And they started and they, are, they became big. Uh, uh, most of the, like, Kontakte didn't have... Uh, I think they didn't have investing. Like uh, they just started and they found users and you know self-investing. But I'm not super competent in this financial stuff. So there are some government funds nowadays organized by Putin. Yeah, like this Kolkova thing. If you have the idea, you can register there. You go through some interviews. And uh, you can get some money from government, and you, they also invite some investors. You can get invested, so you can get money from government. You can get money from investors. This is the same as everywhere, I guess. But al almost always, there are really few startups. All of them start in California or somewhere. But like not, not everybody can go to the U.S. because of visa restrictions, right? So like, what happened to the other ones who stay in Russia? Then? It's not so difficult to get to U.S. Uh, like last time uh, we had presentation about Silicon Valley, and I heard that it's so difficult to get in the U.S. Uh, to work and. They have work oh. visas for the U.S. It's not, it's not that super hard. It's no, not so hard. Trump's trying to change it. Right? But right. change it but. Maybe it's probably like you have a limitation on how much you can, uh, how many you can get per year. Right? Yeah. 
Yes. So that restricts uh, the entry. There, 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 there is a restriction. I remember that the system of zero lawyer. I've heard two times. So uh, I guess but it's not that difficult to, to work as a freelancer on so many websites. I mean, they do it in Romania as well. Um, uh, yeah. yeah, I guess it's, it's not difficult. If they work at home for if Google wants to bring you in or Facebook wants to bring yeah. you in. No, it's difficult still. There's a raffle. So yeah. Uh, there's, a, there's a maximum maximum number of the right. foreign programmers who can enter the net. Well, I guess Russian has so their first. You have to wait yeah, for yeah, yeah, yeah. once a year, they decide. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, even, yeah. Even, even we would decide if they want to hire you. Some yeah, there's a quota. Yeah, yeah. But even they have like, yeah. I'm sure they could like, push yeah. somebody to the top if they wanted. Ah, yeah. Uh, no. There is a very actually, small, no, small limitation, like 60,000 people can it's enter. Slower, they can't. It's just like the green cards when they're in Russia. It's not that corrupt. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It doesn't matter, right. they can go to Europe, so... 65,000 so for all in the... Yeah, yeah. In, in Germany there is a special system, uh, it's called blue card or something. It's also really easy to go, but I have so many friends, so many people I know who just decided, okay, I'm going to America, applied for job, applied for visa, got visa. When I, I, from my perspective, it's so easy. I, I, I never tried people, myself. I guess the people didn't tell you, the people who didn't get it didn't. Probably, <laughs> probably. That's possible, that's possible. I know only success stories, but uh, still, there is Europe, there is, there is also Canada, it's available. And if you want to work, you just, you can stay wherever you like and do freelance. It's freelance is super popular in IT, in Russia. Okay, okay, okay. maybe that, that's why that this Yes, that, that's why they go outside. <laughs> well, probably. Yeah, yeah we also have a huge language barrier. That's a language difference. Yeah, that's a language barrier. Russian is even worse. Uh, Russian uh, Russian uh, language, uh, Russian language, uh, like English language in Russia, I guess same as Japan, Japan, or or even worse. Uh, it's not like I cannot tell. According to the U.S. Uh, uh, it's it's Japanese is the most difficult, and then Russian. And then <laughs> oh, you you mean in this term? That's coming from English to other languages. You're talking about different things. Yes. Talking about how which language is harder to learn. He's talking about yeah. which language. How strong English is within yeah, Russia? Yeah, yeah. Yes. How long is English oh, okay. within yeah. Russia? In Russia, a normal person, when they graduate high school, they don't speak at all. They can read some. When you graduate university, you forget even that. So, if you not. It's like education is uh, in terms of English is really bad. We don't have like the system even like here with native speakers. No native speakers in school at all. In universities also like really few. And uh, like teachers in schools, they don't speak English actually. They just don't. They just, they know some things to teach you like rules and stuff, and but they don't speak language. You can learn any, like, uh, we have French, German, uh, and the depends on the place, you can learn even Japanese if you li live in Sakhalin or Vladivostok. There are some schools which study Chinese, Japanese, but normally it's English. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, so, yeah, you said maybe, as, as you said already, again, I don't really, but I want to ask you the motivation of the genius program. Is that it? Because... Why, uh, why we want to go abroad? Because living, uh, living in Russia is not comfortable. It's uh, not safe. It's uh, like salaries are really low for normal people. If you're a programmer, it's a, it's better, but it's still in the same you know environment. So it's dangerous, not not clean, like a lot of stuff. No? Sure. Even in schools, you if you want to become software developer, like if you have this possibility, you already thinking 
like, oh, if I graduate, I can live somewhere and live there. Of course, not 100%. There are people who love living in Russia. I love Russia, but as many of us say, it's much easier to love Russia from here. Uh, because, you know, well, it's kind of cynical, but uh, living there is just... I will live a shorter life there. Come on, when I was... Okay, I'm Really Very different. And J Japanese people don't want to go abroad. Right. A lot of them. <laughs> a lot of them. Yeah, yeah. No, look, the main difference is the Eastern, it's not only Russia, the Eastern European country. I mean, my country is not like Russia, but you still have to, to struggle to succeed despite the government. Mm. Yeah. So, uh, when, for example, about taxes. Here in Japan, they politely help you uh, fix your problem with taxes. I think it's the same in your culture. They first think. Uh, you're a criminal that you start. You, you try to uh, steal from the government. So instead of helping you, um, you know, get your uh, record in order to, to do something, they start uh, giving you few fines and. That's why he says that they want to leave because it's easier in other places when, when, like in Japan, government or institutions help you succeed instead of you know. Uh, you trying to succeed despite the, the political reasons. Yeah. Just one of the reasons. But if it is free, then it's free. It is free. That's, uh, that's why many people graduate and go abroad. And uh, politicians <laughs> often say, uh, politicians and like uh, really patriotic people often say that uh, we are betrayers because you know you used uh, your country's money, your resources, and you just spending all of that you learned and all of that you earned kind of mentally in di for the succeeding of different country. That's kind of true, but... I feel, this is my personal opinion about Russia, for example, having been there, but I think that would not be an uncommon a viewpoint for many people, especially Americans. I, my personal number one thing was that I would be concerned about and I would feel is the, is the downfall of Russia to crush. Well, this that's true. Is this the same thing uh, you feel like about you're taxes? Just, like, yeah. they, like they took, like, the guy from VK left, right? <laughs> like, could you imagine the U.S. government chasing Mark Zuckerberg out of the U.S.? I mean, so you feel like, I'm going to try really hard here, and then I'm going to have all these corrupt people coming after me, and I'm going to have to deal with this corruption, and I'm going to have to know whose side, you know, whose who's hand to shake, who to who's be the friends, who to be the enemy, and politics enters into business in a much more severe way. Whereas in the US, you know, it's, of course politics enters into business and we get really big to a certain level, but. Yeah, it's just the other way in the US. It's Corruption, bribery, all this yeah, stuff. Is, is uh, corruption uh, worse in Russia than in Japan? Of course. Yeah, really I never. Sure I don't even consider Good. corruption here as exists you know uh, <laughs> of course i mean in this in the scale it's completely different it's i personally got asked to you know to give some bribes and stuff like that i'm not participating in huge businesses i just live no, live normal life of a student in russia and even i had like to get driver license i was like kind of asked to give a bribe you know like that's just an example, it's it never happens here. If you, if you really want to pass the exam of the driver's license, you need to pay for it, or something like that. Well, I mean, uh, if the you go there, no, not teacher, like in uh, this police office, when you drive, you just you drive and they say, okay, it's, we just uh, was driving for like 10 minutes. In the beginning, there was a sign, what was it? Like, Obviously, you don't remember, and okay, you don't remember. You come next time, and next time, and then they say like, well, they cannot say directly, so they say, uh, well, you, it seems you have some troubles. If you want some help, you can, you know. It depends. It's personal. It's not like a system designed like that. I, I guess Japan is not so much uh, corruption as bureaucracy, but uh, in Russia, it is corruption because you can pay your way. Out, you can uh, 
pay your way in. You can uh, you can do a lot of stuff, and some yes. some of the things, even simple stuff, you have to get into this. It's not just for big businesses and like on high level. It's happening everywhere.